Hey, so clearly we are not um, at a zero waste in terms of human society. So we, we need to be doing something different. And, uh, and even though we're taking a look at some policies, you know, we're, we're really behind in, in getting to that zero waste um, goal. So when we to toss away our trash, um, it doesn't disappear. It goes somewhere, and where it goes is to a landfill. And in the metropolitan area, it heads down the pike about 140 miles to Arlington, Oregon. Now, it's a large landfill. It's managed by uh, Waste Management Corporation, and they market themselves as the greenest solid waste handler in the nation. Hi, today we're at the Columbia Ridge Landfill, about 140 miles from Portland, out in the Columbia River Gorge. This is uh, Will Spears, former site manager. Will, can you tell me what we're going to actually see here in the train yard today? Well, right now you're seeing the train pull into the yard. This train is carrying waste from the city of Seattle. It uh, currently has 43 cars on it. We receive six to eight trains a week from the Seattle area. Uh, these primarily have household waste on them. Uh, we receive approximately seven to 8,000 tons per day at this facility. And does all of the garbage that comes to the landfill come in by rail? The garbage comes in by both rail and truck. We try to study what's the most fuel efficient manner. Portland metro area is actually close enough to us that it's actually more efficient to haul that garbage by truck. But with the Seattle area and the distance that it is from the landfill, it's most efficient to haul it down by rail. Uh, we're watching them unload the intermodal containers of waste off of the train and loading them onto trucks to head up to the landfill. So Will, um, you said that everything that's here is household waste. Can you explain to me exactly what household waste is? Household waste is really just everything that you and I throw out at our homes. It's what's left over after we've recycled. Hopefully we've done a good job of recycling and we've taken as much out of that waste stream as possible, but this is basically what's left over. So everything that's here today, this is its final home. This can't be recycled. This is what ends up in a landfill. This is the final resting place for this waste, yes. Explain to me what all of this is. Okay, sure. Uh, we're standing within the lined area of the landfill right now, mm -hmm. and this is where we unload the garbage out of the containers. Right behind you is the uh, tipper, and the truck backs up on that tipper, the truck unhooks, and then that picks the entire trailer up, and it dumps out the garbage. Uh, over here you're seeing our compactors running. And what they're doing is, is they're packing waste into place. They're making a good solid deck. Maximizing the airspace that we use here in the landfill. So I see, Will, that here there's some soil that's kind of a different color. It's darker black and they're pushing it around. What's, what's that all that about? Down below us here, this dirt is basically waste soil. The waste soil actually comes on the train with the garbage from industrial cleanups. Uh, we take that soil and we actually stockpile it until the end of the day and then we actually use that soil to cover the waste at night and that basically helps keep everything in the landfill and it also you know helps keep the birds away and things like that if you look around you don't see really any seagulls or anything like that we do that every day mm -hmm. and then as the landfill comes up eventually when it's complete then we'll put, place a final cover over the top of the landfill mm -hmm. and that final cover will be seeded back to the natural grasses that were here originally. If you look around, you'll see that there's a lot of windmills here. What that means is that there's a lot of wind every day. So what we put in for one of our environmental protections is this 30-foot wind fence right here behind us. And this fence is meant to contain any blowing plastic or other litter and keep it contained within the landfill. One of the great things about this site is that it's really where it's located. Uh, one, this is a very arid location, so we get less than nine inches of rain a year, which is, which is great for land uh, Less water to manage. The geology is also really good for having landfill because we have really over 200 feet of natural clay barrier between us and the you know, first indication of groundwater. Environmental protection is just a number one thing for, for waste management. We've been operating for nearly 20 years, and we have an excellent environmental track record. Some of the features of our systems, our protection systems, are one, we have groundwater monitoring wells around the landfill to ensure that there's you know, 
nothing getting out. Um, also gas probes that are around and they're monitored on an ongoing basis. Um, and then we have our liner system. The landfill when it's constructed is graded so that um, we have kind of troughs in the landfill that, that, that any moisture that comes down through the waste fill will come down to the bottom. And the first thing we actually install in the landfill is a leak detection system. And that leak detection system is placed in all the low spots in the landfill. Just above the leak detection system, we have our composite liner system, which is comprised of clay and a high-tech plastic. It's a very thick plastic and continuously runs throughout the entire landfill. On top of that plastic is a cushion. And then we have a layer of rock, gravel, for any of the moisture that's coming down through the waste mass to then drain into this, which this is basically our leachate collection system. And these pipes are in all the low spots throughout the landfill. And then just above that, you have a, a filter to ensure no contamination gets into the rock. And then we have an operations layer, and then we begin filling garbage above that. And can you just describe to me what leachate actually is? That is the water or the moisture that comes out of the garbage as it's compacted, that it slowly moves down through the waste mass and comes to the bottom of the landfill and then, and then like say, drains into this system. We collect that water down into a pond where the water can be both evaporated or we also reintroduce that water back into the waste mass uh, to help enhance the uh, production of methane gas. Methane is generated from the decaying garbage within the landfill. These are collectors. Uh, these actually draw the gas out of the landfill. We have 65 of these throughout the landfill. We actually have a single well here mm -hmm. and we have two collectors. And these two collectors, one collects from a higher region in the landfill and the other collects from a lower region in the landfill. These are plumbed in all the way back to where the blower is actually creating a vacuum on the systems that draws that gas out of the landfill through a main header pipe and into this flare where it's destroyed. The reason we have to destroy it is that methane gas is one of those greenhouse gases that you don't want. We're looking at the control unit for our flare. Uh, it's giving us a couple pieces of information. Uh, the first is the temperature, 1,579 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other piece of information it's giving us is the amount of gas that we're receiving. Um, you see it's showing 3,069 SCFM. That is basically enough gas to power 6,000 homes. What's going to be different now is that gas will be routed over to this energy plant. Mm -hmm. And inside the energy plant are engines which will turn generators, which will then create electricity. Uh, this is where the power is actually created. This is the generator. Uh, this unit is 0.8 megawatts, which is approximately enough power to power 800 homes. Uh, this plant here will generate 6.4 megawatts, which is enough to power over 6,000 homes. And is waste management really invested in this as a strategy for the future? Yes. Energy plants are definitely an investment that waste management is making across the country. Waste management currently has over 100 of these plants mm -hmm. and is building another 60 more. Waste management creates enough power to power over 1 million homes, and by 2020, we have a plan of powering over 2 million homes. So Will, where are we? This is a good perspective of our site and a lot of the buffer property that we own. Uh, waste management owns uh, 13,000 acres. 10,000 of those acres are really set aside for wildlife and agriculture. Um, we, you also see the Leaning Juniper Wind Project that's behind us. Uh, that is, we have 67 wind turbines on site. Uh, those generate over 100 megawatts of power. So what are some other um, avenues that waste management is exploring that are both sustainable and profitable for them in the long term? We really see waste as a resource. Between the green energy and the recycling, uh, that accounts for roughly 49% of waste management's annual revenues. Both of those are very important to waste management. But first thing is environmental protection. That's, that's a number one with us. Up in Seattle, uh, we have a large fleet of collection trucks. And we just recently changed all those trucks over to compressed natural gas to reduce the pollution in the Seattle area. With the recycling, uh, we have just recently constructed in Washington County a processing facility 
to remove uh, concrete, asphalt, uh, cardboard, and any other metals or any other recyclables that we can get out of that waste stream. You've said that we're getting better and better at, at um, actually producing less waste, but with what you see actually coming into the landfill, are, it, can we do better? What can we do to do better? You are going to see that there are things that could have been recycled, but at this point, now that they've been commingled with the garbage, uh, they're contaminated and can no longer be recycled. So that's why we go back to that point that it's really important to separate that from the very beginning. There's always more that we can do and really I think where that starts is at home. Uh, I think we can, you know, if we can reuse things rather than throwing them away, if we can repair things rather than just going out and buying something new, if we can uh, look to buy things that aren't heavily packaged, uh, all those things are good things that we can do at home. And, that, and I think there's more that we can do to improve upon that. As we've seen, methane gas recovery is the last gasp effort to get anything sustainable out of the landfill. But we all need to do our part to make sure that less stuff actually gets to the landfill. I'd like to thank Will for letting us be at the Columbia Ridge Landfill today. And thank you, Lisa, for your, all your work in advancing sustainability. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Lisa Bell, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.